I was arrested in Lowell on possession of marijuana charges, and it started from there. Nineteen years, two months, and twenty-nine days in prison. The New England Innocence Project uses law students under the supervision of uh, law professors to investigate the innocence claims of a prisoner who applies asking for legal assistance. So our jobs were to basically go through the application, to go through all these materials, to try to get a sense of what had happened in the case, and to determine whether we thought there was a path to exoneration um, and whether the prisoner was actually innocent. And this is really practical work. You have a real case, you have real documents, a lot of documents, reviewing, you have the feeling you really working on something. Once, uh, once a prisoner is convicted, um, you start losing avenues to exoneration uh, because of procedural bars, because of time limits, things like that. So a lot of it was just looking for a way procedurally that we could continue with the case. The general uh, attitude is the case is over, we don't want to do it again, uh, and the burden really shifts then to the defendant. She used to go and ask the um, people who ran the evidence room to look for the evidence. They'd give her different stories. Oh, it was destroyed. Um, we don't know where it is. Um, and all these other things. Eventually they would turn their back on her and wouldn't even help her at all. So she got frustrated and asked someone on their lunch hour. And that person found the evidence. What we know now about wrongful convic convictions, a lot of which has come out because of DNA, helps us to identify problems in the system and to make systemic changes from those problems. I think it would be easier to prevent wrongful conviction if a centralized system would exist within the police to track the evidence. The evidence is simply not preserved, and this is, uh, and so therefore we may have an innocent prisoner serving life in prison, but there's nothing to be done about it because the evidence doesn't exist. Massachusetts at this point is one of only two states that don't have a DNA testing statute. I think it's, it's really key. You know, Massachusetts has been great at providing DNA to inmates who want it through other means, but it basically requires them to, in every case, go before a judge or make the petition to the, um, to the prosecutors. I did an extra six years in prison because there are no DNA laws in the state. So a person doesn't have a right to get DNA testing done. There are people who are innocent who are sitting in jail um, in, in states that have a death penalty. There are people who are innocent who are sitting on, on death row and they need people to advocate for them. They really need help and I think that's in the tradition of the bar and that students, we all respond to that, that here's a way to help people who need a, a lawyer.